So hi, I'm Tal. I'm uh, going to introduce uh, DIM uh, library for uh, dynamic in-app moderation. Oh, what's the thing? Uh, do we have a scribe for this? Somebody who wants to volunteer to scribe this talk? Okay, I'm going to have to pass it to you. I'm sorry. Thanks. Okay. So uh, before we start, a uh, little recognition to uh, Gil and Achiad, which came up with the algorithm and uh, uh, created the first uh, version, and uh, to Andy, which came up with the idea to make the um, library uh, generic and uh, took it upon himself to actually do it. So thanks to those guys. Okay. Um, what we are going to cover? Um, we're going to cover the reasons for um, uh, packet uh, interrupt moderation on the receive side. Uh, it's not the only part that matters, but uh, we'll focus on that. Um, static uh, interrupt moderation points of failure where it uh, stops uh, working uh, very well. And of course, NetDim, what's uh, good about it, how it's implemented, what's the algorithm, and uh, the performance benefits, of course. Um, we're not going to cover the um, interrupt and interrupt uh, handling in general um, and uh, what is the exact uh, static moderation methods uh, and how they are implemented. Uh, I assume this is a common knowledge, but if, uh, if not, I'll try to uh, explain it a little bit. Okay, so what's, what exactly is the problem? Um, we, want, we, we should moderate interrupts. Interrupts are basically, or the handling of interrupts is basically um, utilizing CPU. Uh, if we do it too often for, uh, and not efficient enough, uh, we're going to wind up with a CPU bottleneck. Um, what we're looking for is uh, breaking the one-to-one -one ratio between uh, packets and uh, the interrupts for these packets. Uh, we want to have a lot of packets or more than one packet uh, handled by a single interrupt. And of course, we want to do it without increasing latency or um, affect it, affecting it uh, very little. Um, when we focus on receive side uh, interrupts or receive side packets, um, most or all drivers uh, can process more than one uh, packet uh, for, from a single interrupt. Um, the queue are uh, serial memory, and uh, it makes a lot of sense to access the packets uh, uh, together and not one by one. And uh, if we have multiple function calls uh, for uh, each packet, it's, of course, inefficient. Um, and the benefits, again, are uh, clear. Less function calls, less CPU overhead, and uh, the serial access to memory. We can utilize uh, some uh, data prefetch mechanisms. OK. So let's, let's see where the static configuration breaks. So static configuration means I uh, configured uh, a timer and number of, uh, maximum number of frames that I am willing to wait for before I issue an interrupt. So when we, when we take a look at some numbers uh, and trying to get to a one to two ratio, just a one to two ratio, meaning two packets per interrupt, uh, let's start by uh, looking at a 100 gig uh, link uh, with a default MTU, uh, 1500 bytes. Um, works on, let's say, um, just uh, eight channels. Um, a quick uh, calculation shows us that we're going to get one million packets per second on average on each channel, which translates to uh, just below one uh, microsecond uh, between uh, packets. And this means with, that we can work with a very short, uh, very short timer uh, to get two packets per interrupt. OK, great. Um, what happens when we have a little, uh, little bit more uh, channels, like uh, 32? Again, same calculations give us uh, just below uh, four microsecond. Again, with uh, typical round trip uh, latency, uh, this is more than enough or less than uh, tra uh, troubling uh, uh, number to, to hurt uh, latency. We can have a four microsecond timer, and we're good to go. But um, we are not all working at 100 gig. We can uh, look at the standard or what's going to be the standard uh, link speed, 25 gig. Uh, and I have a very strong system with 80, uh, 48 cores. I want to have channel per core. And uh, I'm starting to get a uh, little uh, trouble because uh, now each queue does uh, very little work and the uh, average share gap uh, between packets is starting to get a little longer. Uh, in this example, around 23 microsecond. And uh, this is not good for us. We need a very uh, long timer in order just to get a one to two ratio. Uh, we're not talking even more than that. So 
this is the problem, static configuration at some point uh, wouldn't work, work for us. Of course, we, we are looking for an out-of-box solution. We don't want to, to uh, change the static configuration for each uh, scenario. Okay, so the suggested solution. Okay, not, not sure what the scan of is. Um, in a perfect world, what we would like to find is some kind of mechanism that for every, every existing uh, traffic pattern, uh, we, it can find a moderation or a moderation values that would optimize all metrics. Of course, in real life, uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, there's a clear trade-off between uh, metrics, and uh, traffic patterns or traffic in general is not very uh, consistent, right? Uh, it changes uh, in uh, time. Uh, we can't assume it would start in a, in a certain way and just continue like that forever. Um, this means, of course, that every algorithm that we are going to implement is going to uh, prefer so-called uh, certain, uh, certain metrics over others. Uh, it will have to, uh, to take a decision if it uh, would like to uh, improve uh, bandwidths, even if it means to uh, do it on, its, on the expense of the interrupt rate. Um, in Dim's case, uh, we are uh, preferring uh, package rate or uh, bandwidth over the interrupt rate, and we also taking care of uh, latency by the exit left policy, which I'll uh, explain uh, in details uh, later. Um, we, we can see it in a, in a moment. Okay, so the algorithm. Yeah, we're not going to do anything uh, that, uh, that complicated. Yeah. Okay, so we try to make it as, uh, as simple as possible, where uh, what we do is sampling, comparing, and deciding what to do, where we're sampling the current state of the, of the system, uh, comparing, it, comparing it to the previous uh, cycle, and then we decide what to do. Um, and the decision will be in the next slide, we'll see exactly what we can do. Um, we decide what is, what is better and what, what is worse, uh, as I described earlier, but there's a, a more detailed calculation here. And uh, we use the feedback from the, uh, from the previous uh, cycle to get a, a better decision. Okay, so uh, what DIM, DIM does is selecting a profile uh, or recommending a profile uh, to the user. Th that's all it, it, it can do. Um, it distinguishes between uh, support for timer reset for the uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, frame uh, timer or the, the timer that I start when I, uh, after I get an interrupt, or uh, if I don't support uh, timer reset, the profiles would be a bit different, but the idea is the same. And uh, what's important to understand here that uh, it's not that for certain uh, data of, or certain sample I'm going to recommend uh, use profile number three or profile number one. Uh, I would only recommend to go uh, right, which means profile with indexes with the higher indexes, or left to the lower indexes, or stay put. Okay, and um, for uh, taking a decision, we distinguished between two uh, faces or states. Uh, either we're on our way to uh, the right side or the left side, as I showed before, or we are currently parking, meaning the last decision was to, uh, wasn't to change the, uh, the profile. Uh, so in this case, it's very simple. Uh, we'll compare the, the samples. If we're going right and we see that the uh, current sample is uh, better, we continue to go right. If it's worse, we'll switch sides and go left. Uh, of course, uh, vice versa if we were going left. And if we are on the same state, we'll just park. Uh, if we were parking, again, if there's no major change between the, the samples, we'll just continue park. Uh, this is uh, in order to avoid uh, a lot of uh, toggling between, um, between states, between profiles, sorry. And um, if, we are, uh, um, if we see difference, a big difference in the, in the samples, we'll decide to go left and right, and here is the uh, exit left policy. Unless we are on the uh, most left profile, uh, we will go left. If we are on the most left, we have no, uh, no um, uh, choice but to go right. Okay, some uh, performance. Um, so here I compared um, Connectix 4 Elix 25 gig adapters. Uh, this is uh, Mellanox's. Uh, and I compared two, uh, two different scenari scenarios. One uh, supports timer reset, and the other uh, doesn't support timer, timer reset. 
Uh, I compared to a um, som somewhat favorable uh, static configuration, fav favorable for um, uh, bandwidths. And uh, this is just running a single TCP stream at full line rate. Uh, there's no, no real uh, problem to get full line rate on, uh, on this uh, uh, scenario. But uh, you can easily see dim is in the green uh, and the static configuration is uh, in blue. Uh, the interrupt rate is uh, significantly, significantly lower on the uh, timer reset uh, side. Uh, this is uh, because um, what dim does is it selects the uh, s uh, lo longest, sorry, uh, shortest uh, timer that it can work with, but still get the reset. Yeah, if I have a, a higher packet rate, I can uh, use um, I can use shorter timer because the packets are arriving <laughs> and resetting the timer uh, quicker. Uh, if I have a less packet rate or a slower packet rate, I would have to use um, longer timers. And the issue here is that um, I'm I want to uh, aggregate as much packets as possible for uh, issue the interrupt, but I w don't want to wait uh, too long. So uh, the problem with the timer reset is the, um, uh, the time between interrupts is, we can uh, know what the maximum would be, but we can't say for sure what it would be every time. So we don't want to go overboard. Uh, without timer reset, what uh, DIM does is uh, it always try to uh, get to a certain amount of uh, frames uh, aggregated between interrupts. Uh, it's a set value. Uh, if you will look at the profiles that I showed before, it's always the same value. And it all only plays with the uh, timer. Uh, it would like to have the shortest timer that would still allow um, a full aggregation or as much aggregation as possible. So again, the the difference is uh, a bit different. It's not the same uh, as with the timer reset, but we can still see the benefit. And of course, just another word, uh, when I use a static 16, uh, 16 uh, U6 timer, I'm starting to see issues with the latency. So it's favorable, the static configuration is favorable for uh, bandwidth, but uh, it does take a toll on the latency. The dim configuration uh, doesn't uh, change any, anything with the latency. Sorry. Okay, and another, um, another experiment that we, di that we did, this is for a Broadcom 25 gig uh, adapter. Um, we ran 500 uh, UDP streams uh, over eight queues. And uh, here you can see that uh, this is um, uh, interrupt rate and uh, packet rate um, as a function of the message size. Green is dim and uh, blue and teal is uh, is the static. Uh, this is static uh, 14, the timer is 14 and the frames is uh, 15. Uh, this is the common values for uh, this NIC. And uh, again, what we can see here is that uh, at start, it the dim uh, impact is uh, significant. It behaves very uh, nice. But um, from the nature of, of my job, I have to show the, the bad stuff as well. Um, dim, dis dim doesn't distinguish um, in the uh, let's call it uh, the quantity of the of the effect. Uh, if if it prefers uh, bandwidth and it gets a little uh, improvement in bandwidth, uh, although it is on the expect of uh, a large uh, degradation or uh, or uh, increase in interrupt rate, it's it's good for him. So this is something that we are going to work on, but it's far from perfect, and we can see it on the uh, on the one k. Um, uh, scenario where we get a slight improvement in uh, bandwidth but, uh, or in packet rate, but a uh, huge uh, increase in uh, interrupt rate. Okay. Um, the usage is uh, first of all documented in, uh, in uh, Linux documentation and the second is uh, very, very uh, easy. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to cover everything right now, but uh, you essentially have to, uh, need to create a, a DIM instance of DIM uh, in your uh, driver. Um, DIM doesn't know this, uh, this is for networking. It doesn't care uh, what you do with it. All it does uh, is uh, comparing samples and uh, give recommendations. Uh, so as long as you um, going to use it properly and uh, give it the correct, uh, correct data, it should work well. But it has no, uh, no way to, uh, to enforce that. So create a DIM uh, instance uh, per queue or not per queue or uh, whatever you want. Uh, make sure to uh, create um, a delayed work for uh, uh, actually um, uh, 
taking the, 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 the recommendation, the changing the values uh, in your uh, driver, um, and pretty much at, uh, at NapiPol or uh, wherever you, you want, you can uh, call the NetDeem uh, function and it would start the algorithm and return and call the delayed work uh, once it's done. Once it's done, uh, if it thinks that uh, something needs to be, to be changed, sorry. Uh, if it decides no change is needed, it wouldn't call the delayed work. Um, okay, and um, what we have now and what are uh, our future uh, plans? Um, DIM was introduced as part of uh, the MLX5 uh, driver uh, at uh, kernel uh, 4.8. Um, it was uh, made generic again by Andy uh, at uh, kernel 4.16, and uh, it now supports or going to be to support uh, adaptive TX as well, not just adaptive RX as part of the kernel uh, 4.18 GA. Um, the drivers that use it currently are uh, MLX5 uh, Ethernet uh, driver and uh, Broadcom's uh, drivers, uh, different Broadcom drivers. And uh, our plans for the future uh, mostly uh, stabilize the profile selection and reduce the algorithm overhead. Again, uh, fixing issues like I showed in the, in the previous, uh, present, uh, previous slides, that uh, the decision that it, uh, it takes, DIM takes, is, uh, looks good on paper but have uh, too much of a price to, to it. Uh, and uh, improve our de uh, debug abilities uh, at the counters and uh, uh, debug data to, to uh, better track what the algorithm does, where it goes, why it takes uh, wrong decisions, uh, and of course, this way we can uh, optimize it better. Questions? So, um, so does this uh, kind of require um, high resolution um, timers in, in the NIC hardware, as most interrupt moderation things does, or does it somehow manage to work on hardware without that support? Uh, define high resolution? Like Microseconds. Yeah, so um, this works. Every NIC that, uh, that supports the, the Linux interrupt moderation already has to support it in a microsecond uh, resolution. Um, what we, what we have, must have in order for, is, for this to uh, work properly is being able to change the values both of the timer and the frames uh, on runtime without um, recreating the queues because this would destroy the performance. But the resolution is, there's no change in the needed resolution between the static uh, abilities to the dynamic ones. Anyone else? Okay, looks good. Hey, thanks, Tom. Thanks. Facebook can't track you anymore.